It is a gorgeous September Saturday in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We welcome you to the University of Michigan. The season opener. Appalachian State, the Mountaineers come to the big house to take on the University of Michigan Wolverines. And for the first time, the maize and blue take the field. linebacker now the team they're trying to slow down Appalachian State back-to-back -back years division one double-a national champions last year they did it with a freshman quarterback and this guy is magic Armonte Edwards 2,000 yards passing 1,000 yards running he makes them go and behind him is Kevin Richardson the Southern Conference's offensive player of the year last year he scored 30 touchdowns great atmosphere as always in Ann Arbor the 201st consecutive game there have been better than 100,000 on hand. Last year, the Mountaineers celebrated a national championship. The Wolverines would like to do it this year. You're watching the Big Ten Network. The national championships already in the hip pocket of Jerry Moore, the head coach at Appalachian State. He is in his 19th season, and today coaches his 300th game as a head football coach at the collegiate level. The tribe captains for Michigan. Yes, there are four there. They select one captain for each and every game. That would be Anton Campbell, number nine. But the three tri captains for the year, Jake Long, Sean Crable, and Mike Hart for Jake Long, back-to-back -back years as a Michigan captain. Only the 11th multiple captain in Michigan's history. A lot of respect for that young man on this team. Michigan will receive to begin this 2007 season. The all-time winningest program in college football history, the Michigan Wolverines. Now there are... Well, Appalachian State on the road in the big house, as nicknamed by the great Keith Jackson. Julian Roush, a senior from Gastonia, North Carolina, set to tee it up. And waiting on the football for Michigan, number four, Brandon Miner, and number 25, Johnny Sears. Julian Roush has an extremely strong leg. He thinks that this rule is not going to hurt him. We'll see on this opening kick because it's a lot longer for these guys to run downfield and cover. Here we go. The college football season underway in Ann Arbor. And a line drive kick fielded at the 15-yard line. That's the tight end, Mike Massey, and he brings it out across the 30. And they'll spot the ball at the 34-yard line. A good return of 18 yards. And right now, I would think you find Jake Long, number 77, and move behind him and Adam Krause. You look at the secondary. Very, very experienced, with the exception of Leonard Love. Titus Howard, the senior, strong safety, disciplined. He will miss one game. That game is today. But Jerry Moore has great experience in touchstone. In the first and goal for the Wolverines on this here first possession of the season. And they're going to try to get Hart to the end zone. He does. Welcome back to Ann Arbor where Michigan leads seven to nothing over Appalachian State. Now Armonte Edwards, the sophomore who as a true freshman did not start until the third game of last season had one of the greatest seasons any college quarterback has ever had. Only the fifth quarterback in the history of college football to throw for over 2,000 yards and run for better than 1,000. Hands it off to Kevin Richardson. And he is bottled up immediately by Terrence Taylor and Tim Jamison. Richardson, like Hart, will become his school's all-time leading rusher before the season is over. We will see a lot of four receiver sets, and they'll run the option out of that set. Up front, they believe Kerry Brown is the best pro prospect they have had in recent memory. Brett Irvin, a redshirt freshman, starts in place of the senior Scott Suttle. Five receiver set, no setback for the Mountaineers. And Armonte Edwards already checking off, making sure his line is getting the call. Short drop, 
Good throw, and a catch is made by Matt Klein, another freshman. And he's out across to the 32-yard line, a gain of six, third down. Up. And the spread has already forced Michigan into more of a nickel look, five DBs. Third and four, they cash in on the third down, and maybe more. Off to the races, and going all the way to the end zone, the speedster Dexter Jackson. He was a Southern Conference 200-meter dash champion, and he ran away from the Michigan defense. Holy mackerel. Tom, the one thing we heard from Appalachian State, and when I talked to people around the Southern Conference, what they told me is, one thing about Appalachian State, they can run. They're never intimidated by any one speed because they have it in spades themselves. We saw it on that play. Dexter Jackson, and just as you described, he ran away from the secondary after catching the pass. Wow. So now the point after to try and tie it at seven for Julian Roush. Good snap, good hold, and we are tied at seven. The Mountaineers walking into the big house, take an early blow, get off the mat as Jackson races for 68 yards and a touchdown. Seven, seven, not even five minutes into the game here in Ann Arbor. A pleasure to be joined by the third member of our crew this year. Let's check in downstairs and say hello to Carissa Thompson. Hi, Carissa. Hi, Tom. Thank you very much. When Appalachian State found out that they would be coming to the big house for their first game, the only people more excited than the players were the fans. 3,000 lucky Mountaineers fans have a ticket to today's game, but even more either flew or made the 10 and a half hour drive from Boone to Ann Arbor, and Coach Moore even made the joke. Michigan is going to the shotgun this year. Here comes a blitz, and down goes Henny. Off the corner comes Pierre Banks, their leading tackler a season ago. And he ran right by and looked like the tight end. They had a twist in the middle, and they brushed twisted, and there was a blown blocking assignment. No one at all blocked Pierre Banks. Illegal formation on Michigan, less than seven on the line of scrimmage. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Lynch charging from his free safety position. Henny out of the shotgun. Quick throw as he is drilled by Lynch. And incomplete. Michigan turns it over on downs. And Lynch, the four-year starter, a fifth-year senior, came charging through untouched and he came through on a delayed blitz from the secondary michigan picked up everyone else but lynch came from about eight yards deep and they didn't pick him up and he's able to get in on henny and force the incompletion big time on charles stewart not bad for former quarterback chase laws i think appalachian state has come to ann arbor to play a little football A 7-7 game, Appalachian State and Michigan. 9.30 to play, and Schilling, a redshirt freshman, makes his college football debut. Manningham at the top of the screen. And he looking for a bundle, and it's Manningham. Batted down, defended beautifully. On the far side by Justin Wose. A four-year starter is Wose. And an underrated player because his partner on the other side, Jerome Touchstone, gets all the attention. This ball needed a little more air. If he has more air towards the pylon, Manningham doesn't have to break stride. When he had to break stride, Wose was able to come back into the play and knock it away. But it didn't surprise me that Mike DeBoer took a shot right there, Tom. Feel to be the best conditioned guy here, Tom. 60 straight days of running the stadium steps. And there are a lot of steps. <laughs> Hard tackled for a loss of two. Coming up to make the stop, Cam Spear. Brandon Miner comes in for Hart. And that second down, Henny to throw it. Dumps it off to Matthew. Touchdown, Michigan.
shallow cross route. They brought Matthews in short motion towards the football. Then they ran him underneath because they took the other receivers and pushed them into the end zone to clear the space for Chad Henney to find Matthews underneath, and then he wins the sprint to the end zone. And for Matthews, his first career touchdown. The point after is good by Jim Jeff. So Matthews out of Orlando, Florida. You're stomping ground. The pride of Edgewater High, home of the Eagles. A terrific program there, and they've been a power for the last 10 years. And I saw Greg Matthews in high school, and he knew he was special. For the Wolverines, back on top, 14-7, 316 to play in the opening quarter. Fourteen seven Michigan in front. Let's check in once again on the sidelines with Carissa Thompson. We'll do that here in a moment. And after this kick, Michigan getting on the field quickly. They're not taking a lot of time to celebrate a 14 to 7 lead. <laughs> they remembered the last celebration. Didn't last very long, did it? No. Three good plays night. and we were tied up. Coco Hillary from his own four-yard line. And Hillary finding room out to the 35 yard line and perhaps a touchdown saving tackle by Donovan Warren after a turn of 33. And third and short. Third and Warren now goes to third and a long six. And they're coming after Edwards. Steps up, delivers, first down. What a hit by Adams, but hanging on to the football is Josh Johnson. But an opening quarter for Appalachian State. There is reason to be excited. They're hanging in there in the big house. 14-7. And we'll return to Ann Arbor after these messages. in Michigan Stadium, the largest stadium in college football, and I'm sure some are feeling a wee bit nervous right about now. We begin the second quarter with the Mountaineers of Appalachian State on the move, trailing by a touchdown. Richardson bounces off a couple of tackles and is inside the 25, and that'll be another first down for Appalachian State. Left tackle, I could tell he was shaken up on the last play. And here's a reverse the other way. A good block. And to the end zone. Did he get in? No. Shoved out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds, actually, before he got there at the four-yard line. Dexter Jackson again, a gain of 19. He might be the fastest man on the field. And watch on the left side the blocks he receives. The wall set up. 82, Josh Johnson, 61. Mario Acatelli, the true sophomore, steps out of bounds about the five-yard line with the left foot. That's where he stepped out. Otherwise, he's into the end zone. And I could to take them out of positions of scoring. That's three penalties now for 15 yards, and you can remember every single one of them. Each one has had an impact thus far. They're hoping to overcome this one and still get to the end zone. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Richardson, the third one in. And now four at the top of your screen. Slam. Catch made. And that is a touchdown for the Mountaineers. Hans Bedeshan, born in Haiti, moved to Miami. The only married player on this Mountaineer team. And he celebrates with wife and daughter after that touchdown. Lots of celebration going on. So the mascot, Yosef. And what they did here, I love the call by Jerry Moore because he flooded the zone with four receivers and was able to come inside. And then Batashad used great agility to cut inside Jamar Adams to make him miss the tackle. Point after is good. I know one thing, Charles. You and I have not seen Appalachian State. It is understandable how they have won back-to-back -back Division I AA National Championships. They're here to play. 
13-35 to play until halftime. Appalachian State, the touchdown pass to Batashan to tie this game at 14 apiece. After him, but as he sit back and play zone and try to force a punt. They're coming after the quarterback, Kenny, being chased by Roman and has to throw it away. How about the Appalachian State Mountaineers? Three and out for Michigan after the game-tying touchdown a moment ago. And that was beautifully coordinated in terms of a defense. The pass rush was there, and still no one able to get free, even though Henny scrambles out of the pocket. Sometimes it seems to be a little more tiring than coming back to receive one. Let's see if Michigan can cover the same one. Well, they come flying down the field again, end over end punt. Jackson from the start. Across the 40. And he is out of bounds at the 47. It looks like a late Michigan penalty. Field position continues to change if this goes the way we think it's going to, which is a hit on the sideline against Michigan. That will tack on a personal foul and an additional 15 yards at the end of the play, if that's the call. Dead ball. Late hit out of bounds. Number 54 on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. That's Austin Panther. Time out. He's the junior college transfer and middle linebacker with a mistake. 14-14, and the Mountaineers get it back in Michigan territory. Appalachian State starts this drive at the Michigan 37-yard line after the penalty. That short side. On the third in the yard. Richardson, first down and more. Inside the Michigan 25 to the 24. Can you talk enough about the savvy of Richardson, a senior, a three-year starting, and a sophomore Edwards? And what you what you like here, because one thing to understand with Edwards, the reason the ball is handed off inside is that Michigan is keeping a good eye on it. If the defensive end doesn't crash down with the full with the tailback, the ball's handed inside. Edwards checking off. Five receivers, three to the bottom of your screen. And the quick slant is Jackson. He'll run away from everybody. Touchdown, Appalachian State. And they are jumping up and down and celebrating on the Appalachian State sideline and in the crowd. And wouldn't you? You should if you're an Appalachian State fan. The spread makes you defend every inch on the field. And on that play, they ran what is called a rub route. I'm a former defensive back. That's a pick to me, okay? It's a rub route. T.J. Foreman, number 12, rubbed inside. And here comes Jackson to catch the ball and go into the end zone. Well, we talked about as a uh, one after is good, Armonte Edwards. How about the savvy of this 19-year-old seven of seven, three touchdown passes? So how did Dexter Jackson get so wide open for a second touchdown of the game? Watch this route. TJ Corman, number 12, right there. Now I know in NASCAR rubbing is racing, and that's called a rub route. A lot of people call that a pick. T.J. Corman trying to run around, appearing to run a pass route, bumps into the defender. Jackson comes inside, ball's delivered. The second reception for Jackson, a total of 88 yards, his second touchdown of the game. And just, we got the check from the sidelines to make the call. Edwards going to keep it himself in another first down. Inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. You saw Edwards look to his sideline again. Checking off, and he saw something there in another big game. See, they, 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 play, they call plays by committee. Jerry Moore is the primary play caller of the head coach, but he also gets help from Scott Satterfield, the quarterback's coach, and Sean Elliott, the offensive line coach. From the booth, they see different things, and they send the check down, and in that play, they check to the quarterback draw. With great And now Edwards will find the end zone. Touchdown, Mountaineers! This electrifying sophomore quarterback out of Greenwood, South Carolina, went 13-0 as a starter last year, did not become the starter till the third game of the season. And Michigan ran a twist inside and actually opened a gap. 
because there's no one to fill the hole after the twist. Watch Edwards, he sees it. The blocker gets chopped, the, the rusher gets chopped down. Jamison number 90, and he hurdles in to put them up two scores. This stadium with over 107,000 in it, you could almost hear a whisper. Well, like any powerhouse program in Division 1A college football, you go to your season opener, you're playing at home, in this case, you're playing a small school from the mountains in North Carolina. We paid them a nice amount of money to come on in and take that meeting and go home. Absolutely, although they are back-to-back -back yep. national champions. But here we are with 2.15 to play until halftime. Our Monty Edwards, perfect on the day in a 14-point lead. We've used a lot of superlatives about him. And he fires to his tight end, Massey, and a great open field tackle to keep the clock running by Jerome Touchstone. How impressed are you, Tom, with the corners of Appalachian oh, State? Because I'm extremely impressed. Touchstone number six and Justin Rose, number 18. We're talking about, you know, one of the you know, scariest set of wide receivers of any team in college football, and they've been with them all day. Across the middle, the catch is made by Arrington, and he's to midfield. The clock continues to run. After so now the field goal from 13 yards out for Jim Gell, who has not kicked a field goal in a real game since high school in 2003. And bangs it right down the middle. You know, he had the butterflies waiting until the final 18 seconds of the half to finally get a chance to get a field goal try. And the crowd here at Michigan booing the Wolverines. I don't understand that part. There's no reason to boo getting the field goal. It was the right call because they were out there down, down in that situation. It was the right call to get because of down and distance. Well, then he's been under fire a lot today since that first drive of the game. And we asked the question earlier, can they get pressure? That one was a blocking assignment missed. Since then, it's just been great pressure by the Mountaineers. Here at Bucks, number 31. Look at Roman, number 40, chasing him down. He's, been, he's had to move, and Chad Henry said he spent a lot of time this summer working on his movement in and out of the pocket. I don't think he expected today to try to, put, to have to put that to so much use in game one. That's not what Chad any worked on it for. I think he was thinking later in the schedule, but boy, is he getting a workout today trying to use his newfound elusiveness. And I don't think you can say enough about the, you know, not only the, the, the pass pressure, but the pass coverage. Mario exactly. Manningham has caught one pass for three yards in the first half of this game. And he's the big play guy. He's cool. I don't think that's going to do it. So I think he's go down and say, okay, guys, we have a whole, whole other half to play. Well, the this story one. in the first half of this is our Monty Edwards. Totally. I and mean, him and the, and, and the spread offense that Michigan's not been able to solve. And the defense. Let's send it downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Well, we understand that uh, Coach Carr uh, has decided to get his team in the locker room in a hurry and will not be joining us here at halftime. Here at Michigan Stadium, everybody goes up into the same tunnel, so things can get bottled up. They're going a huge rivalry game. How about the Buckeyes and the Wolverines walking up there together? You tell you, if they call me to work security that game, I'm not answering the phone. <laughs> that's, that, that's a full-time job right there to try and keep those, that emotion apart and, and, you know, orderly in the tunnel. That's tough to do. 28-17 at halftime. Appalachian State in front. And we will be along with the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report right after these messages. We'll wait to kick. Julian Roush has done an outstanding job kicking the football deep today. And this one no different. Bobbling the ball and having to bring it out is Sears. And he is dropped to the 10-yard line. 